In this unit, we have been reviewing the prerequisite skills you need to be successful in AP Calculus. Often in calculus, you need to know where a function is equal to zero and where it is undefined. In this video, I will show you how it's done. For problem A, we are given this rational function x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 4x plus 4. We need to figure out where this function is equal to zero and where it is undefined. We're actually going to start by figuring out where it's undefined because if there is a value of x that causes the function to be undefined, there's no way it can cause the function to also be zero. So always start with undefined. In order to figure out what's going on, we need to rewrite this in factored form. So the numerator can factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then the denominator can also factor. x squared will only factor as x times x. 4 is probably going to factor as 2 times 2. Could also be 1 times 4, but I'm betting 2 times 2. The middle is negative 4. So we need a negative 2 and another negative 2 to make negative 4. So it's a good thing we factored because we have learned that if you have a common factor in the numerator and denominator, this is where holes come from. All right, when you have a factor that can cancel out, that's in the numerator and the denominator, this is going to give you a hole. And a hole is a way of being undefined. So we're going to have a hole at x equals 2. I'm getting this x equals 2. Uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and go back and show one step. I'm setting this equal to 0. So I'm taking this x minus 2. That's sort of canceling out. I'm setting it equal to 0. And I'm getting uh, x equals 2. Two. So that's how I know that we have a hole at x equals 2. So that's definitely um, one value where the function is undefined. The other way a rational function can be undefined is if you have a vertical asymptote. And that will happen if you have a remaining factor in the denominator. So this x minus 2 is going to lead to a vertical asymptote. But wait a minute, this is the same factor that we had before. Remember when we had the x minus 2's and they were canceling each other out, so we said to ourselves, that's where holes come from. So we're going to have a hole at x equals 2. But because we have another x minus 2 that remains in the denominator, um, it's actually going to be a vertical asymptote instead. It can't be both. So if you have a hole and an asymptote at the same place, guess what? It's not a hole. It's an asymptote. Um, but they really didn't ask us whether or not it was a hole or a vertical asymptote. This is just extra information. Either way, we have um, an undefined place. All right, either way, the function is undefined at x equals 2. So what about where the function is equal to 0? That's going to come from the numerator. If you want to know where the function is equal to 0, you're going to set the numerator equal to 0. So we get x equals negative 2. So the function is equal to 0 at x equals negative 2, and the function is undefined at x equals positive 2. Let's do one more. Again, first we need to rewrite this in factored form so we can see what's going on. If we factor the numerator, we're just pulling out a common factor of x. So that's going to leave x plus 2 inside the parentheses. 
the denominator will probably factor as a binomial times a binomial. x squared is x times x. 6, that's either going to be 2 times 3 or 1 times 6. Um, looking at the 5, I'm going to go with 2 times 3. We can get a positive 5 by making both of these positive. And positive 2 times positive 3 is positive 6. So that's how you factor it. Notice that we have this common factor of x plus 2 in the numerator and the denominator. That's where holes come from. So we're going to have a hole um, there's going to be a hole at x equals negative 2. So that is an undefined value. Um, now we have another denominator that doesn't cancel out. This is where vertical asymptotes come from. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So these are the two places where the function is undefined. If we want to know where the function is equal to 0, we need to turn our attention to the numerator. All right, ignoring the part that would cancel out um, as part of the whole. So the only part that's left in the numerator is x. So if we set this equal to 0, then we simply have x equals 0. So this function is equal to 0 at x equals 0. And this function is undefined at x equals 2 and x equals negative 3.